Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at charged particles in Earth's magnetic field. So let's get started. Now, before we start, it's worth pointing out that everything we're going to look at here is also seen in the electromagnetism topic for the Advanced Higher Physics course. So if you've watched some of my videos for that topic, then this should be a recap for you. So firstly, it says that when charged particles from space approach the Earth, they are affected by the Earth's magnetic field. The movement of charged particles in a magnetic field was studied in the electromagnetism topic but is also presented below as a reminder. So first of all, if we consider a single charge Q moving at a constant speed V perpendicular to a magnetic field of magnetic induction B, then we said that there's a relationship for the force on the charge and this is given by F equals QVB. And I like to think of this as being the magnetic force. So we have F equals QVB where F is the force on the charge measured in newtons, Q is the charge measured in coulombs, V is the speed of the charge measured in meters per second, and lastly B is the magnetic induction, otherwise known as the magnetic flux density, or strength of magnetic field, measured in Tesla. And then a quick note says that if the charge Q is not moving perpendicular to the field, then the component of the velocity V perpendicular to the field must be calculated and then used in the above equation. So you might see that in the corresponding video for the worked examples. Quick reminder as well that we can use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the force on a moving charge. So remember for a negatively charged particle, we can say that the thumb gives the direction of motion, i.e. the force, so you can remember thumb motion. The first finger gives the direction of the magnetic field, which is from north to south. So that's your first finger here, the index finger, and we can remember first finger field. And lastly, the second finger gives the direction of current flow, i.e. the electron flow. So that's the direction that the particle is moving in to begin with. So you can use second finger current to remember that. But remember for a positively charged particle, the direction of movement is opposite to the direction worked out above. So what you do is remember if it's a positively charged particle, you would work out the way that a negatively charged particle would move in that field using the right hand rule, and then you would simply just reverse the direction. So for example, if you use the right hand rule for a positively charged particle, and you find that your thumb was pointing towards the top of the page, then you would simply reverse that direction and say that your motion was actually going to be towards the bottom of the page. And also a quick reminder of some symbols, so it says the direction of current flow or magnetic field can be shown using the arrowheads coming towards you, i.e. the dot inside a circle, to mean out of the page and the back of the arrow, i.e. across, to mean into the page. So if you see a dot inside a circle, you can think about this as being an arrow coming towards you, so that's to mimic the direction of the magnetic field or the current flow. But if you've got a cross, then that suggests, remember, that you've got an arrow going away from you into the page. So that would be for your magnetic field direction or your current flow direction. Moving on, in the electromagnetism topic, we also looked at how charge moves perpendicular to a magnetic field. So we say that the force of a magnetic field on a moving charged particle is at right angles to the motion of the charged particle, and there's no force if it travels parallel with the magnetic field. So if we've got a particle here travelling parallel to the magnetic field lines, then it's not going to experience a force. The force on it will be zero, so it's not going to experience circular motion. However, if a charged particle moves at right angles to this magnetic field, then it's going to experience a force and therefore move in a circular path. And it goes on to say that thus the particle's direction of motion is changed, and as the magnetic force acting on the charged particle is always perpendicular to its motion, the particle moves in a circular path. The force always acts towards the centre of curvature of the circular path, i.e. towards the centre of this circle, and causes a centripetal acceleration. So in this picture, the magnetic field is into the page, shown by the crosses here, and we've got a positively charged particle plus Q moving at a velocity V in this direction, but because it's moving perpendicular to the field, it's moving in a circular path. And this circular path will have a radius which we can calculate and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first of all, I just want to show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So here we have a simulation which I showed in one of the videos for the electromagnetism topic, but I'm going to show you it again. So here we've got a charged particle of charge minus Q and it's moving with a velocity V downwards perpendicular to this large magnetic field. And the magnetic field in this case is going in towards the screen. So if I click play here, you'll see that the charged particle is going to move in a circle. We can also label the force there, which acts towards the centre of the circular path. So we can say that for a large magnetic field, the force on the charged particle is big, the force increases. We can say the radius is going to be smaller and the period of that motion is going to be shorter. However, if we decrease the strength of the magnetic field and click play, you see that we get a much bigger circular path traced out. So let's trace out that circle there and label the force. And this is because this time the force decreases on the particle and we've got a larger radius and a longer period. Jumping back to the notes now, we've seen that there's going to be a magnetic force causing a centripetal acceleration here. 
So it says that if the charged particle is acted on by a magnetic force of magnitude f equals qvb, it experiences a centripetal acceleration a equals v squared over r. And since f equals ma from Newton's second law, then the centripetal force we can say is given by f equals mv squared over r. And this was seen in both the rotational motion topic, the astrophysics topic and the electromagnetism topic. And we can then derive an expression for the radius of the circular path. So it says substituting for f we have that qvb for the magnetic force is equal to mv squared over r, i.e. the centripetal force. And that's because it's the magnetic force here which is causing the centripetal force. So setting these two forces equal to each other and then cancelling a v on both sides gives us qb equals mv over r and then simply cross multiplying by swapping the r and the qb over gives us r equals mv over qb. So hopefully you can see the radius of the circular path of the charged particle depends on its mass and its charge q, as well as the strength of the magnetic field and the speed that the particle is doing. So the more massive a particle, the bigger its radius of curvature, and the smaller the magnetic induction, i.e. the weaker the magnetic field strength, then the larger the radius of curvature as well. We saw that this idea can be used in mass spectrometers to identify atoms in a sample, and that means to distinguish particles based on their mass, because we know now that the mass of particles will affect their radius of curvature. It then says to note that the above expression for radius is not given on the relationship sheet in the exam, so it's a good idea for you to be able to know how to derive it. And remember we just start with the two forces, the centripetal force and the magnetic force, and equate them together in order to arrive at this expression. Lastly, we're going to look at charge moving at an angle to a magnetic field, and again this was seen in the electromagnetism topic. So it says that we have just seen that a charged particle, such as an electron, entering a magnetic field at right angles will follow a circular path. However, if it enters at an angle, it will follow a helical path as it moves forwards. This is due to the two components of the particle's velocity, one perpendicular to the magnetic field, which we can call v sine theta, creating the circular motion, and a component parallel to the field, which we can call v cos theta, creating the pitch in the helix. So let's say the electron was moving at an angle to this magnetic field along here, so its velocity vector v would be along here, then we can draw that vector here and call it v. And that means that we're going to have a component v cos theta going parallel with the field lines and a component of the velocity v sine theta going perpendicular to the field lines. So it's this component v sine theta which is causing this circular motion to occur and it's the parallel component v cos theta which is causing the pitch in the helix. And remember the pitch is the distance between these two adjacent points on the helix. A bit like the distance between two crests or troughs on a wave pattern. So you can see in this case we get this helical motion traced out. Just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this. So again, I showed this simulation when I did videos for the electromagnetism topic, but I'll show you again here just to remind you. So here our magnetic field direction is downwards, and our charged particle minus Q is entering this magnetic field at an angle with this velocity vector V. And therefore, in this situation, the component of the velocity perpendicular to the field is going to be V sine theta along this way, and the component parallel to the field is going to be v cos theta this way. So if we click play, you'll see that the particle moves in this sort of helical motion. And we can trace the helix like this shown here, and we can also label the force vector, which is this purple one here. Now you'll notice that as it moves around the helix, the force vector acts towards the centre. So I'll just start that again so you can see some more of the helical motion. And remember this is how charged particles from the solar wind will move when they enter the Earth's magnetic field and when they are pushed towards the poles of the Earth's magnetic field. So going back to the notes, just a reminder that the pitch is the distance between adjacent loops in the helix after one period, and is given by the pitch p equals v cos theta times the period t, where t is the period for one loop measured in seconds. And this is sort of just like a speed distance time, where we've got distance p equals the speed component v cos theta times the time which is actually the period for one loop. And notice how we're using the parallel component of the velocity v cos theta, as that's the one that causes the pitch in the helix. Lastly, just a reminder that you could be expected to calculate things like the frequency of the rotation or the period of rotation in the helix. And this can be determined using angular velocity omega equals v over r and omega equals 2 pi f. So some expressions from the rotational motion topic. So one way of deriving the expression for the frequency and then the period of the motion is to start by equating the two forces again like we did when deriving the expression for the radius of circular motion. So if we equate QVB, the magnetic force, equal to the centripetal force mv squared over r, then remember we can cancel a v from both sides and that gives us QB equals mv over r. And then remembering 
considering that omega is equal to v over r, we can say that this v over r term on this side is equal to omega, which equals 2 pi f, which is equal to qb over m. So if we take the m underneath here, so we get 2 pi f equals qb over m, and therefore f equals qb over 2 pi m when we divide both sides by the 2 pi here. And then because we know that period is equal to 1 over the frequency, we can form an expression for the period of rotation t, which is equal to 1 over this, which is just the same as flipping the numerator and denominator around. So we get t equals 2 pi m over qb. And you should note that the above expressions for pitch, frequency and period are not given on the relationship sheet in the exam. These are ones you need to be able to derive at yourself. Now just to point out a perhaps simpler way of calculating the period of the rotation is to use an expression in terms of speed, distance and time. So you could use time equals distance over speed, or in other words, period t equals 2 pi r over v, where 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle and v is simply the speed that the object is doing. So that's period t equals 2 pi r over v and that can be used instead of this one here to arrive at the same result. And lastly, just a few notes. So we have that the orbit frequency does not depend on the speed v or radius r. It is dependent on the charge to mass ratio and the magnetic induction b. Positive charges will orbit in the opposite sense to negative charges with force f reversed. We saw that when looking at the right hand rule. Particles having the same charge but different masses, for example electrons and protons, entering the magnetic field along the same line will have different radii of orbit. And in this specific case, if the sign of the charge is different, so we've got positively charged particles and negatively charged particles, then they will also orbit in opposite directions. And lastly, the kinetic energy of the particle in orbit is a constant because its orbital speed is constant, and we say the magnetic force does no work on the charges. So hopefully that's a useful reminder of some of the important parts from the electromagnetism topic, which you could also be asked to use in questions on the quanta topic. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>